It's also clear that TL is like, they're tempting Flycross to first pick Kalista, and then they just pick Natalia away from Jensen. Yeah. Now he's on down to yep. a fifth place pick, you know, on T list. I mean, they'll play Varus into this, probably. Yeah. 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 And, and Varus, 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 yeah. the thing yeah. that I'm afraid of, as you mentioned, is you pick away the Talia, you force them on, a, uh, on another Karma game, or you're forcing him on a pick that he hasn't played yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like Karma with Kalista just does not sound good at all. So like overall, I, I wonder what Jensen is going to be throwing here. If he's if he's fine, basically not first picking the the Talia, and is uh, recognizing that he's going to get his champions banned against him constantly. Probably going to see something like I don't know, Nautilus or Renata here for Busio, yeah. and then. Perhaps Jensen picks Karma now, because if he does pick Karma now, they ban Karma. <laughs> and then he's really not out of champions at that point. Yeah. And oh. The Annie Viego has been something they've been playing a lot together. Yeah. They could go for that combo. We talked about the top of day two. I do like this combo for FlyQuest because again, it does allow them to play the carry jungler. Um, this is the type of mid laner that yes, you would see care play for Yo. Milky Way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, that's our first Milky Way mention here. Um, it is pretty interesting to see oh, okay. the, the Jax ban coming through to prep for the Renekton pick for Bwipo in the top lane in these first three. Yeah, here's another champ that APA plays that no one else plays, the Orion Soul. So I think I like that they're taking away the Talia from Jensen mm -hmm. as well. But they're going for the any Renekton, so I'm wondering if Inspired thinks he has more than three champs to play. You know, the Lee Sin and the Viego are the two most common choices for I him. Think, I think he Vi, I guess, is still open. Vi, Sin Chao. This, game, yeah. the fish. That's this game, there's no Tom Kench to stop his Vi ulti, so maybe he's more comfortable with this one. Yeah. It's very surprising to see the Kalista not being picked with support in the first three. It's a very common thing to see, like, a to pick here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think part, partially it's because Busio is going to be confident playing a lot of stuff. And I've also seen, I've seen a lot of FlyQuest games, uh, this is more true with Kalista than this with Kai'Sa, where even if they make mistakes in the laning phase, Masu still makes some pretty real late game contributions with fighting on Kalista. So I think I really like this first three a lot more. It's just way simpler for FlyQuest. Yes. I think yeah. that Urgot Karma thing was just really weird, <laughs> but this is very straightforward in how they want to play. There's also still so many ways that they can kind of go in this draft, depending on what they want to pick for jungle and support as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, TL recognizing that, take the Renata away from FlyQuest, and also FlyQuest taking out the Volibear, I think, to, to Kobe's point, recently, that's something that Umti has been really, really good about playmaking on um, and been really proactive around ganking either top or bot, as we saw from yesterday and today. Uh, so I like that takeaway from FlyQuest and then Inspired's Viego banned out by TL. Yeah, and the Renata as well. So I wonder if Boosie wants to play something like the Nautilus again. Had a terrible game in, in game one. Yeah. He could pick something funny, you know, like the Rumble or something like that. We've seen him in solo kit so many games. Camille he said support. He'd play it. He said he'd Camille play support it. is available as well. It's good with Kalista, good in lane. <laughs> what do you think Team Liquid should hold for five? Picks? I mean, I no, they no, should, no. I think they should try and hold support for five picks so they can see what uh, oh, yeah. the ball is. For sure. Is. Yeah, for four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. The Sean Khan pick is definitely not worth it. They could yeah. just throw a Lee Sin here if they really wanted to. Umpty's Lee Sin was actually really good when he was playing it earlier in playoffs. Also a takeaway from Inspired, who yeah. probably wants to play at Lee Sin. If he, that, that gets picked away, he probably goes for the Sin Sao or the Vi, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, they don't have amazing setup oh. for it. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, oh yeah. there we go, back to the last one. <laughs> We're getting teased a little bit here. Yeah, basically oh. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite. It's playoffs. <laughs> Sichuani time. I mean, I guess uh, if you're Lee Sin against Renekton Annie, you're a little bit more in danger of just getting one shot, so the Sejuani <laughs> might be better for that. One important thing is that if TL wants to last pick something ranged, it's good to have two tanks in your team comp. Mm. Well, Koji wants to play something like the Syra True. yesterday. Yeah. So in case Buzio picks something that's ranged as well, like Renata's band, I know, but like could be like a rumble or something. Mm -hmm. Then Koji has the opportunity to play something like Syra or a way or something himself. After all that hyping, right. we're like, oh, what's Buzio going to play? It's Nautilus. And it's going to be a, like a Braum or Alistar, I think, from Koji J. It's so good in this game. Yeah. Get him in there. Get his hands dirty. Probably not a Tarek angle, but that's all we do. Yeah. He usually picks Tarek with, with Kalista. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's just an Alistar or a, a Braum. It's so good with Sejuani, both of those champs. There's a lot of ways to start fights for FlyQuest side. You have Kalista, Lee Sin, Alice. Uh, Could play Tom if he wants to. Oh, true. That is actually a good point. So, at least for this game, there's going to be a lot of ways for FlyQuest to actually just engage. Um, every one of their champions actually can get something going. Mm -hmm.
I also will say the biggest improvement for me with is that they have lane prior. This mm -hmm. game, no matter what core J picks here, TL's ball lane will have prior at least in their early levels. Yeah, what's time can They'll have pushing top, pushing ball lane lane. And Jensen doesn't necessarily win against Talia, but you can gank really easily. You press flash W, the guy's done. Yeah. You know, this yeah. him, he's just gonna die. Kill threat. Yeah. yeah. So this is the same time Flyquest has lane power, early game power, and like ganking pressure. Let's see if Flyquest can make this a 1 1. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, everybody, and welcome back. It's time for game number two. Game number one could not have been much more one-sided for Team Liquid. Some early mistakes from FlyQuest get punished, and then TL just runs away with the whole game. All right, uh, shall we continue the legend of Team Liquid playoffs here? Because Let's, we might as well. I feel like in draft, they have a lot of really good looks here too, with FlyQuest having so much hard engage and them having Tom Kench for disengage, Talia Rockfield that you have to go through, and super beefy frontline. Um, I, I feel like it's it's got to be momentum still on TL side. Yeah, especially with how Jan has been playing actually on the Varus. This is a drawing from Emily. She is just insane with her art. Dude, I don't understand how people do this. I can't draw that's a circle real time without also, it looking like yeah. a deflated that's, that's not sped up. She's doing real. that live. And now <laughs> the logos that I, how do you, what? I don't know how she does it. I, she puts pen to paper. We should do it. A draw my <laughs> Thank life. you, Professor. We should do it. Draw my life, which is, but it's us just doing stick figures. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can make some real ugly-looking stick can figures. I'll tell you that because I cannot. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, dude, I have no idea. I just assumed. <laughs> right. I'll make a macaroni necklace. Okay. Uh, All right, yeah. Okay. Kobe, Kobe can well, be our well, arts and crafts. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll diversify our art projects here. Okay. Yeah, we got this. We'll have a whole. Yeah. Uh, We'll get, that, we'll get that going for summer. Yeah. <laughs> because be we're going to go for quantity, <laughs> not quality. Yeah, exactly. Art. We're just going to pump <laughs> out some garbage. Spam out garbage art. <laughs> yeah. We cannot <laughs> overwhelm <laughs> you with garbage. All right. Well, while we're figuring out what we're going to do with that, it's time to toss things down to Raz, who's standing by for an interview with FlyQuest coach Nuke Duck. Yep, got Nuke Duck with me here. Just a quick question. Uh, what in your vision went wrong in the, the first game? Um, We play like split comp with poke against like low engaged team comp. Um, but I think the players are nervous, so executing it was like hard for us. It's like supposed to, we shouldn't just fight 5v5, run at them, should get like lane prios and poke them and look for picks. But we weren't trading in the lanes and weren't finding like the correct mid game setup. So yeah, now we dropped a bit like easier team fight comp. Uh, speaking of like the ease of it, what about this comp if you guys want to win this game is like the ticket? What are you thinking uh, your comp executes on? Mm, it's similar. I think their team comp is pretty bad. So I think if we play like to our level, we will usually win it. Um, their, maybe their win condition, we try to blow too much load on one guy and they save him with Tom Kench, I guess. Something like that. Sweet, appreciate that. A lot of action early, so I'm going to send this one straight back to the casters. Never want to overfocus on a single target like that. Yeah. You got to... Well, when you started saying that, I was like, oh, well, I was going to word this. I, Does Flowers want to cast in summer or not? I am navigating around it, sir. We are taking the scenic the route the situation. through the bouquet. Yeah. Don't put too much offensive power into the toad. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. that's, yep, yep. that's how we're going to go for it, yep. boys. Yep. But uh, Core JJ's performance on said toad was very impressive. <laughs> in game number one. We'll yeah. see if he can reprise that here in game Ooh. number two. So this is actually really fun. Uh, they were digging into some stats before we started showing all, <laughs> all chat on broadcast. APA 7-7. Seven and seven. After all chat starts getting featured on broadcast, 14-3. and three. The more people that see his They're gonna happen, find him. Hey, the more powerful he gets. Hold on, it's a 2v2 here in the mid lane. A lot of burst down into APA. He tries to get out. Jensen needs a little more damage. Oh! He's not gonna get it! APA lives! No way! They got the early start the guaranteed Q and they still win. Meanwhile, bottom side, it's breaking out into even more violence. It's Cleanse, Ignite, and Flash using the side of FlyQuest down here in the bottom. Meanwhile, the only thing left in the side of Team Liquid is the Flash for Core <laughs> JJ. Wow, you guys are so insane. I don't think he means it as a compliment. What gave it away? Sarcasm? <laughs> what? From APA? In my LCS? In the no, all sir. chat? Oh, <laughs> there are some good ones. 
<laughs> oh, it's gonna be crazy when my man goes to MSI and he's all chatting Faker. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's just he's gonna be yapping to everybody. He's gonna I be mean, all chatting the goat. So last world he almost beat Faker. They almost beat T1. Now this world we're gonna improve. He just didn't active. type enough. That was the problem. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We didn't show it. Exactly. Uh -huh. all right, well, we can see this one more time. Almost able to burst him down. Then as Jensen flashes oh, forward, God. he gets Q stun up by Umpty. The passive stacks up. <laughs> he gets an A stun as well. And you just know how good that feels. How frustrated your opponents are. You know they're in their head. Well, also inspired flash forward. And was yeah. just barely unable to get the range for that auto. Yeah, Inspired wanted to flash in to oh, get the oh, last hit, but it didn't work. Now dead. Impact might just get a solo kill. What was Whippo talking about? Where Impact's not the guy who can carry the game? Wait, and now Whippo you flash to kill yourself? Trying to way? juke around, but he just wastes the summer what? spell. Impact gets a solo and a cherry on top. Top gap! Oh my god, back to back Asante's. And he just gets a solo kill and the freebie flash on top. Oh, oh, and Impact yeah. hits him with the question mark. What is up, Whippo? Last time we heard the chat, like 85% of chat agreed to question mark is talking trash. I can't believe there's 15% of people yeah. who disagree. That Those is are all the Kobe's accounts because he was the one questioning it. <laughs> uh, honestly, it's Kobe one, Kobe two, Kobe three. Oh, no, it's not the trash talk. The, the the question mark is the most efficient of trash talks. Oh yeah, it's Bottom the side classic. Though. Abyssal dive brings Core JJ in between Busio and an escape route, but Inspire's ready for the three v three. Busio's gonna drop first. Yawn still alive for now, but Inspire picks him up. Core and Umpty still trying to find more on the back end of this fight as Masu has to flash back away. Over in mid lane, APA's under pressure as a rotation from Whipple's gonna find a kill there. It ends up being a one for one in bottom lane, but the trade ultimately favors FlyQuest globally because of mid. And they're gonna push it all the way up here. Umpty sticking around. I mean, they, they waited a little bit too long to go for another repeat play on bottom side, so glad they're pulling off here. But as you said, it's still beneficial for them. They get to rotate over to Dragon. Yeah, really good kill mid. And and the wave was so bad for APA. You can see that the wave actually got pulled and stacked in mid lane, so we'll slow push towards Jensen, denying almost all of that entire wave from APA. So he dies, he loses the wave. His team will be able to grab this dragon. So that is something for them. Uh, but obviously, FlyQuest is going to be going pretty gold positive off that play. As you can see, Jensen now just about getting back to lane, and he's going to have that full wave at his tower to farm. Let's take another look at what happened here in mid. Ah, so APA just used his full combo on the minion wave also. So there was 0-0 zero, zero chance there, and Jensen got in range for the stun. Once you close that gap, uh, good roam from Whippo on the timing here. Yeah, and that's one of the things Whippo has always been really good at, finding these timings, get out on the map, make something happen, even if his lane isn't going well. Oh, nice hook from Busio. This is what FlyQuest wanted from him in that first game, and finally he delivers here in game number two to tie the kill count up. Three to three, six kills in six minutes. The youngsters for FlyQuest coming alive here in the second game. The double most valuable prospect bot lane. Oh, but Jensen's ready to go. APA has seen that bear Tibbers, and he does not want to see any more. Running back towards his turret now, as Umpty does clear out some vision in the pixel brush around the top lane, but he won't be able to find anything else. And the key difference in this game is that FlyQuest are actually built to scrap this time around with a very aggressive draft, and they're going to continue to do so in the river as Busio and Masu are going to protect the Scuttle Crab until Inspired comes on over. But they are built to scrap this time around. They have so much potential uh, for trying to snowball and just fighting over here. Yeah, and Core just wasn't there to actually cover Yon. You know, Yon didn't have the flash. So he used the heal for the move speed, tried to find the sidestep, but Busio dialed in with the hook. And now Bwipo, ulti's forced. Jensen's on the roam. He's going to try to get up here. Impact should just be able to walk it out, though. Yeah, Bwipo's a hungry crocodile, but Impact is just trying to get away from this one. They chain CC to Cassante, but they don't have enough damage to kill him here just yet. Impact brings Bwipo back underneath the turret. He gets away in the meantime. Umpty tries to come in, see if he can finish anything off, but it won't happen. Nobody dies either side. Yeah, kind of close to being able to bait them in and, and get a surprise counter there uh, for Umpty and Impact, but not quite, so no turnaround around on the kill. A lot of cooldowns used on top side. A lot of cooldowns used everywhere, basically. I'm now looking at Inspired, especially. Lee Sin loves this sort of setup on the map, and he's got Flash plus Ultimate ready. That ward here for TL does see him take Scuttle Crab, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get his play off of, but that Lee Sin is very dangerous right now.
The Lee Sims particularly being piloted by Inspired. Remember the last time that we saw FlyQuest, he found amazing angles mm -hmm. on Berserker in the games against Cloud9, where he was able to bring them back from a disadvantageous situation. Here's what happened in mid. This was Inspired trying to make a move, but APA with a flash in time to prevent himself from being kicked back the direction that Inspired wanted to send him. Yeah, obviously trying to go right back at APA. You know, FlyQuest, Jensen, and Inspired have played really well as a duo, just trying to constantly put this pressure on. And we're going to see this on cooldown. You know, it's not really that you're thinking about getting the kill. Right. You just drop tippers on cooldown. You just pressure them out. Use that to get free push on the wave. And you just constantly go for this chunk because tippers is actually quite a low cooldown. And Jensen is also playing face rush. We didn't touch on that. Uh, but that is something that is pretty atypical. Against some of these kind of slow melee champions, he can just proc the face rush, be able to retreat out after using his full combo. And especially up against Talia, who loves to use her ulti to roam. If you're constantly taking control over the wave, shoving her back, having that dominance in the 1v1, her job becomes much more difficult. As APA did walk off to the side there, so they couldn't see him start that recall channel. But now he has to walk all the way back in between the turrets. Yeah, he's in real danger. Uh, Jensen rushing for the Boots of Lucidity. The key part there is that you get the flash cooldown on it, summoner spell cooldown reduction. Yes. Because Andy just wants to make the most of that key. And when APA has no flash, it is an easy, easy setup for FlyQuest. So uh, off of Inspired's earlier play where he got that cooldown advantage, they wanted the repeat. A lot has changed in the 14 and a half years that League of Legends has been out. That, that's oh. the actual number, by the way. Flash Annie ult has not changed. That has always been the uh -huh. game plan. And for Jensen, we'll see if he can get any of those big wombo combos this game. Remember again, last game, FlyQuest only got a single kill. Bwipo's Urgot was the only one who managed to get himself on the board. So for everybody else, it's time to step up. Inspired on this Lee Sin being a playmaker. Jensen on the Annie being that huge cannon for the team fights. He'll walk over a ward as he looks for another roam up towards the top side. I mean, bot lane is looking so much better. You know, they're up 20 CS or more for Masu, and he got the kill and the assist. The impact potentially in trouble. Yeah, Impact's gonna have to try to get away from Whippo here as the Dominus is used. They gotta make sure they don't give Cassante the angle to go all out and try to isolate one of them. The burst is enough, and Whippo will call the meek. Impact drops. FlyQuest takes the lead. And that's just a really smart play of Whippo trailing through the brush there. Kind of lane ganked his own lane going through the, uh, <laughs> uh, the brush on the side and even though Jensen walks right over a ward it plays into their favor kind of baits impact in uh, and as you rightly mentioned flowers the only way impact gets out there is if somebody mistakenly gets closer to the wall so that he gets an ult angle and they, they avoid that so see if Umti can answer anything towards mid lane Masu playing safe so shouldn't be able to and I do always like you know when you have some a champion like Jensen is playing like the Annie who can get prio move up towards top side because it's a sheen and a bramble vest neither of those do anything against an Annie right, right. no HP you have no MR, so the Cassante is very squishy to the Annie right now, whereas Buffo basically has absolutely no chance in the 1v1. So I think it's smart. It's good map movement here from Jensen to get out there on the map. All right, neutral objectives look like they're just going to be traded this time around as the second Drake goes over to Team Lick, but never mind. Busio repeating what happened in game number one, or is he? Masu's ready to keep him alive now, and APA's in trouble. He's stuck in the river with no way out. Masu's going to make sure he drowns. FlyQuest finds kill number five as Cor and Yon try to get away. Busio and Whippo still looking to chase these guys down as Jensen will not have enough damage to kill off anymore. FlyQuest are up 1,000 gold. Busio's repeating, but it's the alternate timeline where it goes their way. They get another kill. It was really ill-advised fight there for TL to even be taking. Masu is so strong right now, has the Callista ult as well to protect Busio. And this Blade of the Rune King gonna be done here in a hurry for Masu. And he is gonna be very difficult for them to deal with. FlyQuest also, with this early gold advantage, can keep pushing and make the most of their uh, Void Grubs that they've gotten five of already. So trying to get some extra gold out of Tower Plates while they still stand, they can push on up and they're going to teleport here. Even Whippo really wants to make use of it right now, but APA is on the way. Exactly. All five Grubs going the way of FlyQuest so far, and there's still time for them to try to pick up that last Grub if they want to attempt it. Whippo going for the dive on APA just wants to burst him out, but he doesn't have the damage to do it on the first rotation. Now APA! Oh. rides the wall out and just barely escapes. That was so close there, actually. APA, you know, getting pretty confident. Thought he would be able to take down Whippo under the tower. Wasn't able to do it. There's five grubs as well, so gets another plate off the back of that. Pushes APA out. 
Uh, Bluefoot does not have a lot of farm, but he does have that Black Cleaver completed, and Renekton always really strong on one item at level nine. Yeah, and they can just go pick up the other one, get all six now, you get double on your Void Mites, and you just get so much gold that it makes it so easy to fight the next dragon. It's still three minutes out, mm -hmm. and FlyQuest not really worried about the early dragons they've given over to Team Liquid. Kind of happy to see this bounce back from FlyQuest mm. um, with the with the scrappier team comp that they've got, being willing to go into TL and winning a lot of these fights, accruing an early gold lead. It's still only a thousand right now, so it's not like game ending or anything. Right. But they should be in a in a pretty good position considering they got all six void grubs, and that helps out your split push for later on. Yeah, absolutely. And you just want to be able to see them have a bit of a bounce back. You don't want to see them team collapse like that in finals, you no. know, uh, especially after how competitive their previous series was. It was such a battle back and forth between these two teams. You know, game one started a lot more slowly. Uh, it just felt like Fly kind of let TL have their way with it. This time, being able to kind of enforce their will on the game much more. Uh, as you can see, Busio gets that deep ward, but it is spotted by Umti and it's immediately pinked. So they are aware of it. Umti, you're nervous that there was a potential dive coming, so he's not even going to bother clearing it out. Just going to walk right past it and leave that for four. And as Jensen backs away, he knows that Impact doesn't walk up like this unless something's going on, right? You already touched on the fact that none of Impact's items do anything to Annie. There's no reason for this dude to be posturing in such a way unless something is lurking in the shadows. APA on this Talia has his flash ready, but FlyQuest is not afraid to go and focus this guy. This has been a strategy that a lot of teams employed against Team Liquid, specifically in the regular season. They focused down APA, whether it was in the draft or in the game, they wanted to try try to go for him as that point, and it worked out a lot of the time. But now, let's see how things are gonna play out as we have our split screen view, inspired on the Rift Herald, Jensen getting collapsed on here in the bottom lane. He'll try to defend himself underneath the tier one turret, but it's impact and umpty in a 2v1. Jensen just tries to burst down the Cassante. He flashes away from the burst from Sejuani, but impact's gone all out, and APA showing up, collects the kill. Now Masu and Busio versus Yon and Kor back in the mid lane. This 2v2 isn't gonna go anywhere. Busio does not wanna try to dive these guys so close to that turret. Inspired has enough time to pick up the Herald. That's what Masu and Busio are fighting for, while Whippo is split pushing back in the top lane towards the tier two at the same time. And even though Team Liquid do get their kill onto Jensen on the bottom side of the map, it's still more gold uh, into the pockets of FlyQuest because they get that top turret also plus the Rift Herald here. Bottom side turret doesn't actually get finished as Masu gets aggressive with Yawn. All right, another more, another more. Just a prank. Yeah, still gotta respect that Varus damage. If you do get those Blight stacks up, hit your Q, it's always gonna be a lot of burst. Masu is ahead, of course, does have the tier two boots completed uh, where they're not over on the side of the on. And it's gonna be in a pretty good spot to try to make something happen in this game. But the comp is the difficulty, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of trouble, I think, sometimes in closing the gap here. Um, and as Duke Joke said, if you overcommit to one person, Tompkins denies it, the fight can turn really bad. APA trying to use the Weaver's Wall there to see if they can find a pick on Jensen, because there's only 20 seconds before this third Drake of the game spawns. All of the non-support champions are on their first completed item power spike, so it'll be a pretty even fight if they decide to challenge one another for it. APA even having the fully evolved Seraph's Embrace as he just recently got the tier fully stacked up. And Team Liquid have control over the bot side. Rip. Miller just way better set up for this, though. Impact has already moved down as well. There is TP for Whippo, but I feel like it's it's going to be tough for them to actually walk in when Teal are fully set up. Also, even though the, the very tanky comp of Team Liquid might lose out on damage later in the game, tanks are insane on one item. Yeah. Uh, and they've got three of those tanks, so very, very beefy, very, very scary here. Maybe Inspired pulls some tricks and like tries to steal or something, but I don't think you want to commit to this dragon fight. Wait until the actual He's dragon looking. soul. Yeah, they're going in. They're ready to start fighting. They're going to try to burst down impact before anything else. Yoink it. Inspired makes his way into the back and just steals the Drake. It was all a distraction of Amboozle from FlyQuest. The only thing they're going to lose is Timbers, and Wimbo takes the tier two in the top lane as well. So good on the call there. They they don't want the actual fight. They just want to steal and keep Renekton and split pushing. Two for one on objectives. Lee Sin with your Q is so good at securing these smite fights. So Umpty didn't even want to try and fight it. And now, oh, nicely Spider-Man by Busio. The dredge line into the wall to buffer through that seismic shove. APA now in danger. Busio re-engaging with the enemy mid. And Team Liquid has to try to get out. Inspired wants to jump in. Core JJ forced to save APA. And Whippo makes his entrance into the fight. A beautiful kick on the yawn. Inspired does it again with the Lee Sin. Fly quest. Pick up the kill on the Varus. They don't lose a man doing it until Impact finds Masu in the very back. It'll be 80k 
carry for AD carry for so far, but FlyQuest is continuing their push. They still have the Herald for the tier two in the bottom lane. This is so big for FlyQuest. This has got a ridiculous amount these last couple minutes. Absolute robbery of a Dragon Steel. Free two tier, uh, tier two top. They get a tier two bot, a tier one bot, and they get the kills. There is no way they should have been able to get that much. TL really, I think, got split on what they wanted to do around that dragon. If you're not going to answer Whippo, you have to secure the dragon. Everyone but Umpty walked away from the dragon. Even Umpty walked away from the dragon. <laughs> yeah. He saw that least in. He was like, okay, you're going to outsmite me. Let's get out of here. Honestly, though, Busio and Inspire turning that last play with the flash hook onto APA and then Inspire going in and getting the hook. Whippo wants to. Oh, oh, APA does not hit the seismic shove. Whippo's still chasing after him, but he's already used the cooldown. Still he's, five he's, more seconds before he's got the slice. He is, uh, he's really in there, boys. This croc is, oh, he finds the stun off the Weaver's wall, but the Seraph's embrace will keep Whippo, but only for a moment. Whippo will die, but he will drag APA down to hell with him. So it's kind of hard to see on the overlay, but Core JJ did not have ultimate there. Uh, at the beginning, you could see APA was actually running towards the Tom Kench, but the cooldown was not there for it, so it is the one for one. All right, what does FlyQuest want here? They are still hanging around, looking for any sort of a potential pick, but Team Liquid's not going to give them anything. It is a 4,000 gold lead for FlyQuest, not even 20 minutes into this game. Inspired Quietly is as high level as the Soul Inners as well. He's got two level lead on Umpty. He is getting very strong. Look at his farm. He's got as much farm as his mid laner, more farm than the other mid laner. Yeah, I don't know like, about Quiet. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy, man. He, I mean, he's 1 0 1, but he is getting really strong. Yeah. Absolutely massive bounce back, especially considering game one where Umpty just cleared him on every level. Here's another look at how Whippo knocks APA off of the wall. Yeah, he has the W stun there, holds it for when he gets on the Weaver's wall. And then this is APA running down. He was expecting the Core JJ ultimate, but it was not off of cooldown. He needed to keep walking up in that situation. Whippo having a laugh as he gets a kill that he knows he did not expect to. Impact runs away from the Tibbers. It is under two minutes now until our next Drake spawns. Still a Team Liquid lead in that department, but now a TP coming in for, to reinforce Impact. They're trying to make a move on to Jensen while the rest of FlyQuest has eyes on Baron. Can Jensen buy enough time? He flashes out of the seismic shove, and Tibbers is still burning Impact down. Jensen is just going to waste as much time as humanly possible. Tibbers is still beating Impact in the 1v1. Barely alive now. Finally, the bear's gonna die. APA should be able to pick up the kill here on the Annie. He's gonna get that, but now the fight back up with the Baron. Team Liquid trying to stop him, but they're stuck in a 3v4. Impact is making his way up, but the problem is he's got barely any HP to do it with. Inspired and Masu still with control over the Baron pit. Right now, Nautilus ulti down on Yon as APA tries oh. to ride the wall into the fight now. Seismic Shaman gonna find a whole lot just yet. Oh. It's gonna be stolen by MD! And Team Liquid claims the objective. Now Busio drops, and it's a double kill for Yon. FlyQuest fall to pieces, and Team Liquid answer the challenge. It was actually a good setup there for FlyQuest, but then Jensen goes back in. He dies a little bit early, trying to jump onto APA right into the seismic shove, and then they lose their rend smite fight. Nicely done from TL. They just take that entire gold lead out of FlyQuest's hands. And look at Yon's position, by the way. Hugs the wall so that the hook will actually not pull him back towards him. Then stays perfectly max range here. To be able to get his Q off on Bwipo. Tanks the Nautilus ult. At this point, there's no more threat for Yon. So the fight is basically over. And now it is just about securing the dragon. They go in there, and the smite fight is won by Umpty. Anything you can do, he can do better. You take the dragon, he takes the Baron. The little things, too. Getting that knock up onto Inspire to make sure the Lee Sin can't Q the Baron to get a QQ plus a smite combo. Also, little things to try and help your jungler get things in, in their advantage. And then at the end of the day, they take the wheel. Uh-oh. Impact, now your target, but that's Kasante. So he is going to walk it off. Meanwhile, Yon shows up with the Chains of Corruption. Busio is going to lose about 60% health on that one. And Team Liquid, with their newfound control over the Rift, they are going to claim soul point with that third drake. FlyQuest have been trading away these dragons for gold lead, for topside, for all these void groups that they have. But now it's a big punishment because the Baron stolen negates the gold lead and they still get to dragon soul points. Team Liquid still focused as ever. And now look at the map too. How quickly it turns in their favor for Vision after winning that fight. 
Yeah, and I mean, you even look down at the bot lane where Masu had this big lead. That is is now completely gone. Yon yep. is the one that's actually ahead. They're both on two completed items, but you know, more items in pocket working towards that third there for Yon. Yon has been so good, so consistent on the Varus in playoffs for TL. He's got the Tom Kench behind him. And I think he's in a really good position to carry this game. It's going to be up to the X Factor champions over on FlyQuest. you got to find a big kick or a big engage that hit multiple members. It can't just be on one. Oh, he tries to go in for Yon, there. but there's no follow-up. What is Inspire doing? He's just going to be killed instead. Impact gets the shutdown. Now Whipple's in the middle of everybody all alone. Yon's finally shut down, and the Croc finds his man. CoreJJ tries to escape, and Whippo is dominating the fight. FlyQuest finds the angle. Inspire's sacrifice is not in vain. Humpty will at least get Boosio on his way out, but APA is stuck behind enemy lines, and FlyQuest gets a four for two. Yeah, Jensen and Masu were on the way there. They were just a tiny bit out of range at the damage, but it didn't matter because they got the Tom Kench ult out with that play, and then the rest of the team finishes the job. FlyQuest right back on track. Yeah, and this is one of those situations where when Yon does actually die, he's so much of their damage, but they're just sending everything and the kitchen sink at him. Q onto the Tom Kench. Warnox kicks him away from the Tom Kench. Then he gets devoured. But now everyone is arriving, and as everyone piles in on top of Yawn here, you can see Whippo flashing in, slice, dice, finishes him off. Now it's really only APA on their team that does any damage whatsoever. Masu is chasing down Impact. That's him gone. Everything falls apart for TL off of what looked like an engage that I did not think was going to work out. Yeah. The fact that it started off with the kick, with no immediate follow-up, but yeah. then still ends up being a four for two. Well fought from FlyQuest, and this is kind of what we had to see them do back in their series against Cloud9 as well. They were in situations that were disadvantageous, but they outfought in the bigger fights, and it gave them the edge they needed. Now Impact's about to face check as Whippo pops the Dominus to charge up the Fury. It's only him and Busio right now, so not a ton of damage to try to kill this tank. Inspired is going to show up. There's your Pathmaker. Impact trying to go unstoppable here. He'll bring one of the guys through the wall with him here with the all out. Impact still trying to escape while the rest oh. of Team Liquid goes for the tier two turret back in the mid lane. Inspired with a dragon kick to the head as Jensen and Masu now try to mount the 2v4 defense. Jensen's on the right side of the Weaver's wall and Masu has to flash away from the wrong side. Now Jensen gets a multi-stun and Core's barely hanging on. Flash over the wall from Busio and the rip tie rips Core apart. Now Umpty tries to escape as Inspired kills Yacht. Masu wants to cut away from AP but he can't do it today. A double kill for the mid laner from Team Liquid, but surely he will not escape. He kites back into the enemy base, and the ace comes through for FlyQuest. The cavalry arrives for FlyQuest. They pinch on TL, trying to make that play on the bottom side. It took way too long. They couldn't finish on Masu. After this initial play on the impact, they get the kill on him. This took quite a lot of time. But TL saying, okay, we need to make something happen on the other side of the map. Three members went for impact. We must make a play elsewhere. They try to force it, but it's so long and drawn out. They can't kill Jensen or Masu off quickly, and it buys all the time that FlyQuest needs to be able to get there. It's all because of the double summoner spells from Masu. He uses the cleanse on the Sejuani ult, and then he flashes the combo from APA. Yes, Team Liquid got both those summoner spells out, but because they invested all that time, the rest of FlyQuest are able to close the trap. They finished up with their kill on the impact and head on over to collect the rewards. It would have been even worse, though, by the way, if APA didn't get those two kills mm. uh, on those bottom side members. <laughs> Battle of the mid laners. Mid gap. Holy. So Jensen beat him 16 by... 16 more damage. Yep, 16. There you go. That's that's something worth yapping about. It's first place, second place in yep. damage. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> second place is just first place silver medal. As we've got impact again, being the one having a face check. The Cassante will tank up as much as he can, but he does not want to remain. Team Liquid falling back now. They are once again down three and a half thousand gold. Whippo pops the Dominus. He's ready to march forward. Umpty gets locked oh. down, and Busio misses the dredge line. Now they've got Whippo in the front of everybody as Umpty tries to escape. Whippo being kept alive here by the Steric's gauge as impact goes all out. He's found Whippo in the back line. He's isolated him only for a moment. And Boss who's ready to chase. He throws Busio right back in, but nobody from either side dies, and the dragon is spawning in two seconds. I just love how FlyQuest are layering CC to force out the ultimate from the Tom Kench early in the fight. Every single time they spend one thing, whether it's the Tibbers or a kick or an ultimate from Nautilus to get that ultimate onto Yon, and then as soon as that's gone, they're gonna send everything onto Yon while that Tom Kench has no ulti. It's really good play here, layering those cooldowns. 
And yeah. they're going to give up that dragon, even though it is Dragon Soul possibility. TL, after that fight, they don't have the cooldowns to win it. So they immediately send APA up top side to get the minions instead. And we're back to the battle at the Baron Pit. Last time around, FlyQuest thought they had the setup, but Team Liquid and General Umpty were ready to answer the challenge. This time around, it's looking like a very similar game state. The gold lead, a little bit less for FlyQuest, but they are still in a commanding position. When you're looking at completed items, it's three fully completed items in the jungle for Inspired's Lee versus only the two of Umpty, one of which is a nice Val. It's like a thrift shop item. It doesn't really fully count, but this is an advantage just state for the side of FlyQuest. Jensen now also on three fully completed items with that Crypt Bloom. Especially when TL have so many tanks on your team and then you have all this percentage health damage on FlyQuest being built. The Leandries, the Blade of the Ruin King uh, up here on Masu as well. Like they are going to rip through these tanks that were so efficient on few items and it becomes less efficient later the game goes and you start to be starved yes, for damage. And so positioning really matters. Look at this flank from Whippo up here. Sneaky crocodile. I'd also say TL really need to be the ones starting out the fight. If they can be the ones pushing up cooldowns, it's going to go so much better for them as Inspired's looking. Yeah, Inspired wanted to jump in and try to find Yon, but now Whippo has made the flank happen. The burst comes through. Yon stays alive, but they kick him back over the wall. So even once he gets spit out, he can't participate in the fight. Core JJ jumps in the middle of everybody, but it's just a food delivery. APA is going to be focused down next as Whippo continues to survive and thrive. He pushes forward with flight quest. Every man still going. Hit back at the kill on Busio, but it costs them everything. A double kill for Jensen, an ace for one for FlyQuest. And that could potentially be it. Look at the timers there. They're seeing if they can actually tank this up. They just have one minion. The next one's coming in, but they're pushing for the Nexus and they're pushing for the tie. It's 10 seconds on core. It's so much longer on everybody else. Game number one was a stop, but FlyQuest woke up for game number two. They're gonna try to finish this one right now as Core JJ dives in alone, only to stand and die alone. Core falls, FlyQuest ties up the series. It's one to one. Wake up call received loud and clear. FlyQuest with a quick bounce back here. They're like, okay, you want to constantly fight us? They won't draft a fight. The gloves are off. And my goodness, I'm still thinking back to that Lee Sin kick from Inspired. Another one from him. Been a menace. Six, one, and eight. He had 231 jungle CS. That only, is crazy. Only outpaced by his own AD carry. More than every yeah, solo leader in the game. More CS than every solo leader. More CS than every Team Liquid player. And he's making plays like that. All right, after that FlyQuest performance, let's head back over to the LCS Lounge to break it all down.